What is up bros with Josh here. In today's video we're going over some German Destroyer gameplay. We are back onto our series, our Road to Tier 10 series. If you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link down below to our playlist. In this playlist we go through all the lines in World of Warships from the lowest tier all the way to the highest tier. And it's kind of a way for me to revisit these lines and play them, to see how they've aged, to see their strengths, weaknesses, bring up some, even some topics that maybe I hadn't thought about because I don't play all the ships all the time anymore, and really just kind of get out there and have some fun. And the German destroyers have really been one that has kind of been been an eye opener for me recently, and it's brought up a lot of uh, interesting topics on stream. We play all these live on stream, twitch.tv slash mejosh. Come check us out. Come hang out. And it's been a lot of fun. We basically go through all the lines in the game. Uh, we play them all solo, and we retrain captains, as you can see. Um, I don't have a very high level captain. I think it's a level 11 at this point. I think I just got to level 12 on the um, on the stream last night. So we we're slowly getting up there. And in this game, you will see us with the smaller caliber guns. That's one thing I like to do with these ships as well, is do a complete. We just fully got it upgraded. Um, but we are using the smaller caliber guns, and I like to do a side-by-side -side comparison with these ships and do with the smaller guns and then the bigger guns and then do a kind of an idea and make a video on that. So look forward to a video on that. However, though, the German destroyers, one of the, they're kind of an okay line. They've been around for a while now, um, but it's a line I think that's always kind of it originally had a spot in the meta. And you will see us, I think, even use it in this game with the long range hydro. But the line itself has never really stood out a lot. It's never, you know, there's a couple looks at the high tiers of the tier 9 and tier 10 that are much stronger. But as the days have gone on, that line really hasn't, you know, really hasn't shined too much. The guns tend to be mediocre um, with a weird kind of reliance on AP. You'll see um, us use a little bit of AP this game. Uh, but the HE is pretty mediocre. Um, the Torps. Uh, known as being very fast reloading. However, um, the alpha damage is fairly low. Speed is pretty good, but the damage is fairly low, and um, the uh, detection is actually fairly low. So overall, pretty solid, but known as having kind of the quote-unquote faster reloading torps. Um, but one of the topics that actually got brought up in chat the other day is with the uh, with the introduction of the pan-European destroyers, which their entire thing is having these extremely low um, alpha ships, and as you can see right here, um, the, one of the things I hate about, especially the, the smaller caliber guns, is just how inaccurate it seems. Um, the raw firepower, as somebody called it, of these of these guns can be pretty brutal. However, though, um, and I think at this game it's still been a little while since we played, and uh, and we hadn't quite embraced fully going back to the AP when we needed to. So we probably would have got a little bit more damage there. But the European, the pan-European destroyer line, which is um, just announced so the upcoming line, destroyer line in the game, um, as being one of the new ones, has that line kind of pushed out the German DDs from having any kind of real identity? Um, I'm kind of interested in what you guys think. This is more of a discussion video. This is overall a pretty solid game. But what do you guys think about the current situation of German destroyers? And what I mean by that is, do you think the upcoming European destroyers, which the entire thing about them, is having these fast spammy torps so not only are the torps faster the torps uh are faster in general they reload faster and um, they're about the same stats for detection and they overall do kind of the same damage i mean the 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 eu dds obviously are a little less but even on some of the torp hits i get i think even in this game we roll like seven thousand damage that's one of the things you kind of notice when you play the german dds was that um, when you did actually hit them, the damage tends to be fairly low compared to anything else. Now the European is a whole nother level, but um, has the European destroyers even increased uh, the lack of needing to play these? Now, the German destroyers have a thing that, that kind of sets them apart, and that is the long-range hydroacoustic, um, what I would call a very uh, offensive hydroacoustic. It's one of the um, one of the things that this ship has, and it's the thing that sets this, this line apart from everything else. However, though, the, over time, it really hasn't been enough to make it kind of stand out. In ranked battles, you'd see some of these played. In clan battles, I don't think they're really represented that well because they just aren't the best. Um, there are some situations early in the clan battle seasons that it would kind of work on some. Um, but really, everything else though, it just doesn't quite work. The torp range isn't anything crazy. At tier 8, we have 
5 kilometers, which really isn't that good. 9.5 kilometers are what the Pan-European. I think the range is 15 kilometers, and those go 76 knots. Or those even might be in the 80s. I actually can't remember right now. Um, but I think at least 76 knots. These are 66. And um, with a, you know, almost twice as long reload time on those torps, it's just like, are these upcoming destroyers going to be... Are these going to make the stock of these lines go down even more? Um, it's kind of an interesting thought. I, I I don't really ever play these DDs anymore. I used to love the Tier 9 and Tier 10, both the Z46 and the Z52. Um, I loved those ships. They were so much fun. However, though, uh, if I wanted to really go out and play, um, let's say the teams were bad that day or we're having a rough run of games or something like that, those aren't the ships I'm going to be going with because I feel like they just can't quite carry as much as they used to or against other ships at that tier. Uh, comparing a Z-46 to a Jutland, a Z-46 to a Kitakaze, um, even a Fletcher in most situations, um, I think I would take the Fletcher. And then you're talking about other things like the Benham, you're talking about, other, you know, there's some tier 8 ships I'd rather take, I think, than the Z-46 these days, sadly, uh, with stuff like the Cossack and whatnot. And really, even stuff like the Lo Yang, which kind of takes the identity of the Z of the German line, um, and kind of has taken over that tier at least. The Z twenty three for me, I've always been extremely harsh on this ship, um, since it tends to be kind of the master of none destroyer. Uh, the guns are so mediocre. Although obviously I am using the smaller ones, I do like the higher rate of fire. But the alpha damage on the big guns obviously can be bigger. But the DPM is so low. The ships did just get a little bit of a buff. I think the Z-23 just got a health buff. Um, so it is a beefy boy. 22,000 was survivability expert. 22,300 at tier 8. Very, very competitive. Very large uh, health pool. But these ships are fairly large. But no, it was a good question. And I'm interested in what you guys think. What do you guys think of the current uh, German destroyers? Do you think that they have a good enough identity right now? And I think, is, is this the Torp right here? So that Torp was a German Torp, and it hit for just under 8,000 damage. Um, so would you take that Torp? Now, obviously, I hit the Torp, uh, torp Belt on a battleship, so it's going to obviously be a low, a low roll. But I hit the Torp Belt, and then... Um, and then, but would you take that or the European destroyers, which are going to be able to load twice as fast? I probably would have hit twice as many torps because they're faster, um, I guess, especially against a Mexico. And I'd already have my reload back up for torps. And you will see the uh, the life of the small caliber guns against this. They're so inaccurate. I didn't remember this, and this is one of the things that I love about playing these lines again is it reminds me of everything that's going on and and these lines i just don't get to play that much well don't get to play i have to choose not to play them or i'm working on uh everything else uh but yeah interested in what you guys think also um a big topic of splits came up as you guys know the russian split cruisers have been announced so one of the topics that uh, was brought up um, is what my opinion was on these uh, on these ships and really I think the that there's a potential for even a German split line in the future um, and you will see this and actually I want to show you kind of a funny salvo right here uh, I think we get all the guns on him and we miss him and as you see my left turret is going right my right turrets going left uh, a bit of a bummer but I think there's one salvo he's at five kilometers is it this one yeah, there we go. <laughs> you can tell I stopped shooting there for a second because I think I even did a like a big sigh on stream. Um, but uh, it was kind of funny. But yeah, uh, for a split on this line, I think they could actually do it because we see uh, uh, two identities on a line. And I think Wargame is going to start doing uh, more splits in the future. It just makes more sense. Um, Wargaming kind of wants to get out of low tiers. Um, and really kind of push, I mean, as you see everything, they're just pushing more people into higher tiers as fast as possible. And um, I could easily see them do a split in the future for German destroyers. Main reason being is we see two kind of identities in that ship. And, and if you've ever played a destroyer, what you're about to see here um, is the best feeling in the world. And yes, if you can see what's on the mini-map, what we're really close to, it feels good. Let me just tell you, it feels good. But we see a split with the the big caliber shells as well as the small caliber shells. I could easily see them do a split when it comes to 
um, the German DDs, and that would be kind of cool, uh, kind of a separate one there. But overall, though, I, I feel like the German DDs in general have really kind of lost their thing. They really kind of lost their identity. I, um, you know, I will use the word power crept, and I feel like they don't really bring too much to the table um, compared to so many other ships. I feel like they... Um, at their tiers, uh, I think they're arguably some of the weakest at their tiers. You're talking about the tier 6, the 7, the 8. Um, I, th I think those are some of the weakest ones at the tiers. If you really talk about which ones you would consider honestly good or near the top, you have the T61, maybe some of the low tier ones for seal clubbing. Um, but that's really about it. And we're going to pop in some citadels just for good measure. But, oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. There we go. A nice little, just a four citadel just for uh, just for the feels. And then we get a nice little um, game with, it feels so good, as I said in chat. Yeah, as he will get his, his uh, guaranteed damage on me right here. But, hey, uh, at least we got our kill, which makes me feel good. But yeah, this is so much. Uh, this is more of just a game we were playing here. It was an interesting topic that got brought up in chat. Um, but has wargaming kind of forgotten about the German destroyers? I feel like, in my opinion, they've been so mediocre for a long time, and they've never really kind of stood out. I feel like they've always kind of been, um, you know, near the bottom of strength. You have a couple that tend to do fairly okay, but when um, but when you get into a situation where they have to actually do well, they tend to not really do that well against everything else. Against the top tier, their ship, or even looking at anything kind of competitive, and it was kind of funny. I made the joke that I got good karma for killing the CV, um, and then I detonate the destroyer, so it was kind of goofy. But I, I feel like German DDs have never really been that competitive um already and then over time as more and more lines come in and more and more gimmicks kind of come in the germans are going to continue their stock is going to continue to fall um and now i know a lot of people when i talk about that they really enjoy these ships and that's really cool but let me just talk about pure strength of these ships is this something that um has kind of made you guys or maybe you haven't even thought about it and that's one thing i love about playing these series is uh is is it kind of brings up questions and thoughts and and uh, and stuff that because i just don't play these ships really that much anymore there's so many ships in these games th these days it's hard for me to keep playing them so revisiting these lines and that's one of the time that's one of the reasons why i wanted to revisit the german destroyer line because it's been so long since i've played um these ships i would say going through this line it's been since they've been released which i think is easily two plus years um, and not really much has changed, but I would say the things that these ships did well has kind of been done by other ships. Ships continue to get stealthier, um, guns continue to get better. The only thing these this line really brings to the table is its ability to have that long range, long range um, offensive hydro. We've gotten more defensive hydros with the Royal Navy line, so that def that real offensive hydro. I would say the defensive. Hydro with those other ones, the offensive hydro, um, with uh, with that whatever five kilometers if not more on some of them, that is something that this line has and that is it. But is that really even worth that much these days? When um, who really cares about having an offensive hydro if you can't get close enough to use it? Um, we even saw that potentially uh, the European destroyers. The original idea of those was to have all radar. So does that kind of negate it anyway? It's hard to use um, that long range, long range hydro. Now it does take um, advantage of some pretty good. Uh, it does take advantage of some uh, bad play, especially as DDs, because a lot of DD players. Uh, still don't, can't really play around uh, the long, long range hydro, don't really understand how it works. Um, so you can definitely make some some plays with it, and we did throughout the night when playing the ship. Um, but uh, there's so many other times I was like, man, I kind of wish I was in another ship. I'd probably be able to win this, or you would probably be able to make an impact on this game, or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm interested in what you guys think. It was kind of an interesting topic. Overall, though, the line has been okay uh, playing back through it. It's uh, the middle tiers were, in my opinion, the tier six and tier seven 
were not the most fun to play. There were so many games where it's just like this ship just can't do enough. I even got into a situation where um, I was fighting against an Akazuki, and it felt like I was a Tier 6 ship against a Tier 8 ship. Um, luckily, we were still able to kind of outplay the ship and um, win the fight, but uh, but still, it feels like you are just kind of outgunned, out-torped, out-everything when I'm playing these. So maybe that's just my opinion. I'm interested in what you guys think. And again, maybe this is something that you've never thought about. Um, this is something that I never really thought about is, is does this European line kind of replace these in a way? And will the German line, German DD line continue to not be played that much? Um, but yeah, uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about the current German destroyers. Have they kind of uh, gotten forgot about by Wargaming? I'm really interested in what you guys think. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.